Hey, beautiful people. It's your girl Rocky, your revolutionary hippie from Life is Rocky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe and help me get monetized. All right, so today in my Manifest Realities Happiness Coaching playlist, I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. And I was never meant to be. <laughs> so let's hear more about it, shall we? All right. So I'm going to describe my journey and take notes about the process, the time, energy, and effort I put into the process in order to meet these certain goals and the allowance of being able to change and being flexible enough to stick with what my spirit was telling me versus I put all this time, energy, and effort into something and I'm about to let it go. Okay. <laughs> and let me know your thoughts in the comments below as well as if this is helpful to you in your process and figuring out what you want to do in life. All right, so I went to Hampton University for my bachelor's and oh, I really got to backtrack. Okay, backing track. Um, so I started writing at eight years old and from that point, that's what I wanted to do. I I wanted to write uh, children's books to help little black girls feel confident and loving and beautiful within themselves. Um, but when I got to high school, it was like, I need to make some money. So how can I turn this talent and gift and artistry that I have into some money? So I dabbled in print journalism, but that re wasn't really me. It was taking the creativity out of my writing and I didn't like that. So. I was like looking into broadcast journalism um, and that stemmed from me having some acting experiences. So I was like, okay, I get to be in front of people. I don't have to be as, you know, logical and shit because I was definitely thinking radio. Um, so that being said, I went to Hampton University um, where I majored in broadcast journalism. I minored in English, okay? And then just out of natural curiosity, uh, Hampton University has a black psychology class. And I've always been fascinated about the psychological effects of slavery on African-Americans or black Americans. So I was like, ooh, let me take this class. And I fell fucking in love. I loved how the mind works. I loved learning about how our trauma impacted us mentally, socially, just community level. It's just so many ways. Um, and then I also love learning about how people interact with each other, the relationships that we had, right? So I started taking more psych classes in undergrad and just kept falling deeper until eventually I found within Hampton University psychology department, a marriage and family track, right? So, oh, a little bit of backspace too. When I was doing uh, radio stuff at Hampton, um, so I had an internship at a radio, uh, station on a talk show. And then, um, like my internship on campus was at our radio station there. Um, well, no, I had a class where I was like doing extra credit work basically. And I was either producing the show or just engineering it in some way. And then one point I got to talk on the radio and that shit was fucking fire. Uh, Cause I was talking with the audience. I fucking loved it. So, so writing was for kids. Radio was for the parents of those children, the couples, the adult individuals. And then when I found that marriage and family track, I was like, oh, this gets to help everybody. And it's also feeding another point of curiosity and fascination that I have, right? So then I took a leap of faith and moved across country, went to the University of San Diego where I got my master's in marital and family therapy. And it was definitely a leap of faith because like, that was a whole different field from what I had just spent four years, you know, doing. And um, luckily I loved it. I loved the work and I loved learning about the different family dynamics and relationship dynamics and, and yeah, it was just, I love learning about it. And then my practicum site, I was at a childcare facility where I facilitated parenting classes. I was able to go to the daycare that they had for the different age groups of kids. Um, yeah, and I, and I saw a lot of parent-child dyads. 
Um, I was practicing play therapy with kids. So it was, it was definitely a beautiful experience. I'm so thankful for that experience, right? So then I moved to Oakland from San Diego, um, commit to only working at black practices. And then I realized seeing children in the therapeutic context may not be how I want to impact them because a lot of the shit is their parents. <laughs> and it's just a lot of limitations with therapy, just out of regulation. Um, and I was like, yeah, this isn't, this isn't how I want to interact with children. So that put me back into my experiences with my mom and my sisters in home daycares, where I was like, yeah, I would rather do that where it's more focusing on their development, um and just like just literally playing with them without an agenda you know so so yeah so that's where i'm taking child development classes coming this spring and preparing for motherhood as well as a later daycare start date <laughs> um and then also what happened with therapy was I really invested into learning about trauma. Um, Dr. Joy DeGroup uh, speaks a lot in the Bay. So I've attended her seminars about the post-traumatic slave syndrome. I've been to uh, Decolonizing Our Psyches by Dr. Amber McZeal, or she's about to be a doctor, she's on her PhD. Um, yeah, so I've been like investing and learning and I've been in these black practices. So I've been investing and learning of how our trauma has impacted us. Um, so I was definitely in it, enjoying learning about it, but it was during uh, the pandemic and quarantine that I realized most of my day was full of, my work day was full of trauma, depression, and anxiety. Now I got into therapy to just, learn about mental health because I was fascinated by it, excuse me. But as far as practicing, I wanted to do more relationship oriented work. However, I don't have the energy to hold that space with couples. Um, my partner, check out Smart Love with two T's, <laughs> um, holds that space really well. He loves working with couples. So sorry if you can hear the kids above me, they're awake on a Saturday. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So they're distracting me. Hold on. They're really loud. Um, so yeah, so I like I, I realized I liked working with transitional ages because there's so much happening in your life in a transition where if you don't know yourself, if you aren't in touch with your spirit, it could um it could send you on a path that you aren't meant to be on so i love that working with that age group and then also i'm very tool oriented as a therapist like i was always having resources and worksheets we was always doing something we was all so but a lot of my work was process oriented especially past process oriented and then it was more trauma work and I realized I wanted more present to future. I wanted more action. A lot of my therapy clients weren't ready to take actions to better their lives, right? And then again, my days were full of trauma, depression, anxiety. And I want to deal with that part. Like it was, that's not what I signed up for when I, I decided to go the therapy route. That's, I went for the relationships and just my curiosity about the, how the mind worked. It wasn't something that I was like, ooh, I want to work with this specific thing, but that's the most common um, experiences that people have uh, within their mental health. So that's what I was seeing. Um, and then one last thing, notes. I did not sign up for notes. I did not sign up to work a job and then have homework. I didn't sign up for that shit, okay? So during quarantine, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can no longer hold the space to process this shit every day. Um, I'm, I'm just, there's too many regulations. I feel boxed in. I feel like I'm not self-employed. Like I've still got to follow somebody else, whether that was my group practice or the BBS or insurance panels. Like I felt too fucking controlled. And I was like, I can't do this shit anymore. And my depression was really in bad. So that where thankfully, um, my life partner 
allowed and afforded me the ability to transition into my next career, which is Manifest Realities Happiness Coaching. And I'm so thankful for him allowing that space because I needed support. I needed financial support because building my coaching caseload is different than building my therapy caseload. And it's a different process. Like this, this is legit my own business now. So it's like, it's all me. I don't have any structure to depend on. It's all me. Um, so that's scary as fuck. <laughs> but now I'm coming into the jingle jangle and the fuck up as my partner says, um, where it's like, I'm using everything that I've learned, everything that I've experienced on this therapeutic path as insight into coaching. I can have it be present to future. I can have it be action and goal oriented. I can teach skills that I've learned that are necessary for just how we operate within life. And it's like, and I have so much knowledge about a variety of topics because of the six years that I was practicing, um, as well as the additional years that I was in school. You know, it's eight, is that eight years? Jesus. <laughs> um, Jesus, yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a decade. It was a decade of dedication to this one path. Um, so I see how much it's in, it's influential as well as it taught me so much to be able to get to this point where I can be my own fucking boss. I can develop my own fucking program and I have the knowledge to back it up. This is like try, true, practice and deliver, right? So... It, and it gives me so much freedom. It gives me so much freedom to do what I want. And I'm, I'm realizing like, yeah, while I was meant to go on the therapy path, I wasn't meant to stay there. And accepting that, being flexible in that and not having other people say, well, you finally got licensed. Why are you going to stop now? First off, ain't nobody taking my license from me because I'm going to keep renewing that bitch. Okay, because I worked hard to get that L. Thank you. And then second, I plan on supervising because we going to keep these black therapists coming up, you know. And uh, and I worked hard for that L shit. <laughs> not going to tell me what I can do and not do with it. But anyways, um, yeah, so that's that's where I am. And it, I'm in a very good place. I'm in a very good place as far as the acceptance of my process and just being open to all the possibilities that are now afforded to me. So I'm very excited to give you more Manifest Realities Happiness Coaching content. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm about to make this transition out of practicing therapy. I got three more weeks and then I can put my time, energy, and effort into coaching. And that's, I'm also going to be developing courses because I'm about to go on maternity leave. <laughs> I'm not pregnant yet, but it's time. So yeah, I need to develop these courses. So that way you can take the self-guided journey um, with my skills training and life work. But uh, I will say, I mean, coaching is more individual. That's a, I'm speaking to you, you know, <laughs> but if you want to learn more, check out my website. It's the, the link is in the description box below manifestrealitieshc.com. So yeah, I'm really excited about this journey. Um, I'm thankful that again, I was able to transition in the way that I am and I'm excited for more to come. This I'm, I am now seeing the greatness that I first envisioned. And I'm like, yeah, this shit about to be big. Watch me blow up. Hey! <laughs> and you can start by subscribing to witness my journey as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, as a happiness coach, as a writer, as a painter. Like, this shit is unlimited. <laughs> we are infinite beings who cannot be defined, for we are limitless. <laughs> Peace and love.